All right, now creating multiple streams of income allows a person to diversify the various cash flow sources that are coming in. Now, in the event that one dries up, then there are other sources of income to lessen the loss. Now, if 2020 has taught us anything, it is the need to have several sources of income as we saw how quickly some people's jobs and businesses suffered. Now, to survive 2021 and beyond, uh, do yourself a favor. <laughs> And take control of your finances by creating multiple streams of income as we are about to learn from our guests. But we'll bring her shortly. So let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. So I wanted to ask you and Uti quickly before I bring in our guests. How many streams of income do you have? None. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll serious? tell you why. Why? As a practicing lawyer in Nigeria, under the legal practitioners, LPC or whatever, you are not allowed to. Uh, how are you going to survive? Thank you. Now, <laughs> I have diversified. I'm waiting for them to come and catch me. Are you serious? <laughs> Honestly, yes. You are not allowed to. Ha. Uh -uh. Yes. I think it has to be reviewed in view of the reality. Seriously? Yes, reviewed? because I think it was made in 2007. I think some lawyers have to advocate for them to, you know, you have to open up. Why do I, what does that have to do with being in court or being a practicing lawyer? Why can't I have a side also? But of course, a lot of lawyers do. But I wasn't to, you know, You're following the books. No, I, I didn't think I had that kind of um, tenacity. Do you understand? Mm. But now, 2020 has shown me. Shown you so I have <laughs> diversified now. So I think I'll be wrong to say I, I don't have. Yeah. I just I never used to have. Mm. But 2020, I have. So don't let me advertise that I'm doing that. Okay. Because I can start really need that. <laughs> <laughs> let me come to you, Uti. Uti, how many oh, uh, <clears throat> Uti, how many types of income do you have? How many size of size size also? Have you side also? Um, be truthful, Uti. Well, so my, my side hustles tend to, to go up, down, up, down. So um, I do many things. I wear many hats. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I might have three going at the same time. And then sometimes I might just be like, you know what? I'm a little overwhelmed at the moment. I'm taking a break. So I'm more in the services industry. Um, so yeah, so everything I do is not, it's more intellectual property and things like that. So um, typically, yeah, two to three, sometimes four, depending on, on what bandwidth I have. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so I saw a quote. I saw a quote online, and it says that billionaires, right? The average millionaire, sorry, has seven sources of income. I've heard that multiple times. When I saw that, I do said, I, "Okay." Do I believe so. Is, is that yeah, what you I mean? get to that point where your money can work for you. Well, yeah, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't get what she said. Or no, you have to get to the point where your money can work for you. Yeah. So let me bring in our guest. Motorayo Adefamoti is the CEO of Money Stewards and. An investment firm with locations in Lagos, Atlanta, Houston, Kenya, London. Wow. As CEO, she leads a team of wealth management <clears throat> executives with expertise in diverse um, foreign investment. Now, thank you. She's joined us live. It's See, Hello. you can tell I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm Usually, so excited. Are you just in Lagos because of the Usually. Christmas? Yes, you know. Usually we, she's in <laughs> Kenya, but yes. we have her live in studio, so we are super excited to have her. Like, Thank you. So Hello. Like Kenya. Kenya is amazing. Are you serious? Very, very, very great weather. Why good did technology. you choose Kenya? Well, my husband uh, was uh, got a position there, so the family oh. had to relocate. So, wow. do you wish to come back to Nigeria? Oh, I am now. <laughs> you know, Move back to Nigeria. So enjoy my life. Move back. Well, I consider myself a world citizen, so wherever I find myself, I make it work. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. I like that word, world citizen. It means you can earn in every currency. Of course. Wow. <laughs> in every right, so, country. So tell us, um, we're talking about multiple streams of income, and it was so interesting when I was scrolling through, you know, all the things that had happened 2020 mm -hmm. and how it just completely messed up some people's sources of income. In fact, People in the hospitality industry, that sec that sector was worse hit. So you s you now see that a lot of people started moving, start doing so many things. Then all of a sudden on Instagram, you see people that probably maybe they were I don't know. They just started selling something. Everybody just started looking for something, you know, to sell to earn money. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just occurred to me that we're moving into 2021. We don't know. I mean. 
2020 has dealt with us, but we don't know what is coming in 2021. And, you know, so how, how do we even position ourselves towards 2021, you know, learning from the lessons of 2020? Mm -hmm. How do we start and where do we even start from if we say we want to build, you know, and get that, uh, what do you call it, steal money or how do you call it? Uh, shame money. <laughs> shame money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before I get to that, I think, um, and thank you very much for that wonderful question. I think that uh, we've had a, a, an awakening the fact that we've all, I've always preached multiple sources of income because you just never know. Uh, I was working in the financial sector and one time, one day I had a job, the other day I didn't, the next day I didn't. So you never know because when you're working in that job, you know, you have a start date and an end date. You just don't know what the end date is. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, um, that was a few years ago. So that kind of started my own journey to self-discovery and uh, these multiple streams of income. So I like to, I'm sure we've heard so many streams of income. Some people say, oh, I have 10, mm -hmm. I have 20, I have 100. <laughs> and sometimes <clears throat> you end up just doing so many things and not really focusing and gaining traction. So I've been able to sort of quantify all these multiple streams of income into four key categories. Mm -hmm. And um, well, how did I come up with the four key, key categories? Really, from Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, and not to go to religious really on you, but it does say that um, four rivers water the Garden of Eden. Mm. So at the macroeconomics level, in the country level, you know, a nation must have at least a minimum of four sources of income. And as a family unit, you must also have a minimum of four sources of income. Mm. So what are these sources of income? You mentioned your lawyer, my learned colleague. So <laughs> that's a job. And there's nothing wrong. Never think that because you're, you, you have a job or you're an entrepreneur. You know, we always think the grass is green on the other side, but there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a job is great. Being an entrepreneur is great. It's, it's what you earn and what you ultimately do with the income mm -hmm. that matters. So, but that job that you have is just one source of income, okay? One source of income. The second source of income, I say, is entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. okay? So you look at but it like a not cross. everyone that can be an entrepreneur. Fantastic. Uh, you see, one thing you must know that every skill is either learned or acquired. So there's nothing that you cannot learn. If you can work, if you can work a job, you can also run a business. Mm -hmm. Now, what the kind of business you run, not everybody can run a, uh, you know, a certain type of business. And nobody, not everyone can scale up. But certainly, everybody can earn some sort of income in entrepreneurship. And you remember in those days, in order to be an entrepreneur, you had to have a brick and mortar somewhere. Mm -hmm. But this is, you don't have to. You don't. It could just be drop shipping. It could be doing something online. You could be, you, you have a fantastic services. voice, even if it's voice yeah. over yeah. artist. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that you can do as an entrepreneur. So the idea that not everybody can be an entrepreneur, and it's a very popular one. You know, those are like old rules of money. The rules, new rules of money says that you can do so many things. And because, you know, internet, Instagram, social media has, has made it easy. You know, people are sitting now in their house and they're selling other people's shoes mm. without even having contact with them. Wait, so, well, let her finish the four. Okay. Because so we don't lose it. All right. You so said job, the, the entrepreneurship. And th that's why I can't shame money, which I'll talk about mm -hmm. later on the entrepreneurship. So the third source of income is I call it partnership and consultancy. Okay. Now, no matter how smart you are, you cannot know everything about every industry. So you partner with people that are experts in industry to find opportunities in the industry and demand a commission or some sort of bonus. So what am I saying, for instance, I sell properties in America. If you find somebody for me that wants to buy any of the properties, you deserve a commission. Mm -hmm. And don't come asking for the permission, ah, please, or when you sell this property, please remember me. You know, no, 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 no. You demand for it. For it. Yeah. it is legitimate yeah. work. In fact, my first business was IntroConnect. I just used to connect people to diff different, even clothes. <laughs> I would demand for it. Yes, you have, you know, you, you come with confidence and say, you know what, I'm going to introduce clients to you. I, you like my dress? Okay, I have somebody that sold it for you. I'll introduce and I'll get a commission. Now, any savvy entrepreneur, wants business. And if you come to me that you can introduce clients to me and I, all I need to do is pay you commission, you're my best friend. Mm -hmm. So, and you demand for it. Don't, don't, don't become, oh, please remember, no, what is remember me? <laughs> you, you made that come to your craft. Yeah. It, exactly. And I can't tell you that that was really my first main business that I started. And you can make tons of money just connecting people. Now, we know not every business is going to go your way, but the people that will pay will pay. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth source of income is my personal favorite, which is investments. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have your stocks, your bonds, your shares, your real estate. So you can earn dividend and portfolio income from your stocks. You can earn mm -hmm. rental income and capital gains from your 
real estate, you know, and now people are doing online courses, so that's also an investment, you know, that pays, you know, and basically a multi multiply effect is the investment. So I always say to people, no matter what you earn in your job, the first source of income in your entrepreneurship, the second source of income, or in your consultancy, the third source of income, the multiplier effect is really the investment. Mm -hmm. This is where you begin to make your money work for you. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a very popular story uh, of somebody that actually had all these sources of income and worked for them, the Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. all, we all know her story. She started with what? Wool and flax. Mm -hmm. That was a major job. Then she expanded to silk and purple, where she was able to forge diplomatic alliances. Mm -hmm. And her first source of income says that she dealt with the merchant ship from afar. She was not a captain of a ship, so she had to partner with people mm -hmm. to deliver awesome. her goods yeah. and services. And then the last source of income says what? She considers a field and buys it. That's mm. real estate. That's investment. <laughs> Absolutely. She plants a vineyard. Yeah. That is an investment. That angle, <laughs> and I like the way you were analytical about it. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. yes, it's, it's, a, it's all rules to say that you know what I'm not an entrepreneur no 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 you might not now if you're a lawyer you're probably more comfortable in your space you can draft so you can do things on the on the side maybe you don't know anything about uh, medicine you know so it would be unfair to expect you to run a, a clinic you know without a like something that's connected Bingo. Yeah. okay so you're gonna go <laughs> Yeah, you, know you know what? You know what? Uti, are you there? I lost it. Yep, I'm right here. Okay, so Hi. do you have a question? Yeah, I'm, I mean, um, I was listening very attentively to all the things that I was learning um, as Mo was speaking, and it was taking me back to, I'm sure everybody read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and the, the idea of getting out of the rat race and, you know, having your money work for you and the concept of passive income. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to, you know, I guess for me, it seems like investment is a rich man's game. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have enough money to pay your bills, but you, you want to invest, right? Because this is what's going to get you out of the rat race. Mm -hmm. So what would be your, your thoughts on how to get into investments in a cost-effective way? Hmm. <laughs> Very good question, and I get a lot of that. You see, it's also a mindset thing, because I think over the years, our parents, our, uh, our money lesson is to save. Save this money, manage what you have, be grateful, and all those money principles are great principles. But it's time for us to start to teach the next generation that the real multiplier effect is investment. Now, if you, the fact that you made $1,000 last you for three months, yes, that's a skill of management, but it, it's still $1,000 at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's never gonna be more than $1,000. And if all your skills is <coughs> management, then you would not acquire skills to multiply the money, mm -hmm. all right? So we need to change the narrative that the real skill is mod multiplying the money. So yes, the truth of the matter is a lot of people, you're never gonna have enough money, okay? But you also have to know that everybody that has died, they've never taken the money with them. So the money remained on earth. And so there are people, while you're saying you, know, you don't have money, there are people with access. So you need to acquire the necessary skills to gain access to that money that we're mm. talking about because it hasn't left anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, and so, so you're saying that if, even if you're underemployed, mm -hmm. you don't have too much money, mm -hmm. you can still get skills that can obtain money from the people that have access. Oh, absolutely. Is that what you're and yeah. how do you do that? You, 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 first of all, you, you add value to yourself. You come up with problem solving techniques. I talk in talk, should I mention shame money? Oh, go ahead. Fantastic. What is shame money? The whole concept of shame money is that there's a, everybody has a skill, talent, or a resource that they can monetize, but they are shamed. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that we are skilled in our ways. So you say somebody that does, isn't making enough money. All right, I know of a lawyer friend. Monday to Friday, she's in court, fighting cases and so on. But in the, in the, on the weekends, she's in the market selling secondhand clothes. Mm. And believe it or not, she made more money <laughs> selling secondhand clothes than she made in the office. So the, we're, there's, there's, we, the brain, scientifically, is proven that we only use 10% of our brain. Mm -hmm. So what is happening to the remaining 90%? Okay, so there are things that you can do. I was in financial services and I was selling smoothies. That was my shame money, you know? And the, the idea of me going to work, oh. all right? Selling smoothie for 200 Naira. So now, do you know I did not understand what you were saying by saying shame money. Mm -hmm. Now I get it. Mm -hmm. What we're saying, a lot of people attach, particularly lawyers. Mm. Lawyers have this prestige around. With a weekend lawyer, now. Mm -hmm. But to be very honest, 
an average woman who sells jewelry in Lagos Island has more money than some lawyers. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you need to get off your high, high horse. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do something by the side. I like, I so like you can still mm -hmm. do your prestigious job. For but, you must, but, but you but must understand what brings the money. Thank the you. Absolutely. Money. Now I get it. Okay, so we're <laughs> going to go on a break. Now that Lamy has gotten it, <laughs> we'll go on a break. When we return, very short break, when we return, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>